Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to give you an overview of zone based policy firewalls. We'll be discussing the benefits of a zone based policy firewall and we're going to look at zone, pay, zone based policy firewalls design. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. There are two configuration models for a Cisco IOS firewall, classic firewall and the zone based policy firewall. The classic firewall is the traditional configuration model in which the firewall policy is applied on the interfaces. The zone based policy firewall is the new configuration mode. Now, this is where the interfaces are assigned to security zones and the firewall policy is applied to traffic moving between the zones. There are several benefits of a zone based policy firewall. First one here is it's not dependent on ACLs. You don't have to create access control lists for a zone based policy firewall. The second one, the router security posture is to block everything unless you explicitly allow traffic to come through. Now, the third one here has to do with the Cisco Common Classification Policy Language, also known as C3PL. Policies here are easy to read and troubleshoot. C3PL is a structured method to create traffic policies based on events, conditions, and actions. This provides scalability because one policy affects any traffic instead of having multiple access control lists and inspection actions for different types of traffic. The next one here is virtual and physical interfaces can be grouped into zones. And the final benefit is policies are applied to unidirectional traffic between zones. So traffic going from one zone to another, you can have one policy, but if it's going the other direction, you can have a different policy. Designing zone-based policy firewalls involves several steps. The first step here is to de determine the zones. A zone defines a boundary where traffic is subjected to policy restrictions as it crosses to another region of your network. So we have a zone, and that zone is a logical grouping of computers or functions on your network. And what happens here is when it crosses to another zone, this is where it sub is subjected to policy restrictions. Step two is to establish policies between the zones. What we're going to do is we're going to define the sessions that clients in the source zones can request from servers in the destination zone. Step three, design the physical infrastructure. This includes dictating the number of devices between most secure and least secure zones, and also determining redundant devices. And finally, step four, identify subsets within the zone and then merge those traffic requirements. If you like this episode on zone-based policy firewall overview, and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button give a five-star rating, write a review. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to be alerted every time I release a new episode. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my socials and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Here's a simpler example of setting up zones for a zone-based policy firewall. Here we have two zones. We have the outside or the internet, and then we have the inside. So once again, we have the inside zone and we have the outside zone. And what we're gonna do is determine what traffic can travel between those zones. We have our router, we have our firewall right here in the center, and we're gonna set up policies here that allow traffic to travel between these zones. So you're gonna have one set that goes from the outside to the in, and you're gonna have another set that goes from the inside to the out. Here's another example with three zones this time. 
This is sort of having a DMZ, but we don't call it a DMZ when we're working with zone-based policy firewalls. We call it the perimeter. So we have our three zones. We have the inside. This is the inside of your company, your local area network. This is the outside. You can think of this as your ISP. And then down here, we have our perimeter. And this is equivalent to, some people would call it a DMZ. What we put in here is devices. And so we got a mail and web server in here where people from the outside of the internet, they need to connect in. So maybe this is like an e-commerce site. And so you need people from the internet to come in and purchase that. Maybe it's part of your ERP package where your business partners will come in and update inventory and schedules, look at their bills, whatever it is. But because you don't want to give them full access to the internal of your network, you've created this separate zone, this perimeter zone. It's not inside of your company. You don't want to give them direct access into your company. So you created this third zone. So we have three zones here, inside, outside, and perimeter. Here's another example with three zones again. Once again, we have our inside, and this is your local area network. We have your outside, and this is probably your connection to your ISP. And then we have our perimeter. Now, where we put this perimeter is sort of in line with that connection. It's not a separate zone where you have one, one router with three zones connected to it. Here, you have to go through the first router. And so you can, go through this and we'll, we'll call this one R1, go through R1 and that gets you into the perimeter, but you also have to go through R2 to get to your company. This is separating here, the perimeter server, our mail and web server. Once again, people from the internet need access to our mail server, or mail server and our web server, but you don't necessarily want to put them all the way into your land. So we've created this zone sort of in line with the traffic pattern. We're going to take that example and we're going to take it a step further. We're going to add redundancy because you always need that uptime. You, you can't afford to have that network go down because your business relies on it. Here we have our three zones. Again, we have our inside, our perimeter and our outside. But this time, instead of having two routers here, we're going to have R1 A, R1 B here. So router 1A, router 1B. One signifies that it goes between your outside and perimeter if one of those goes down the other one will take over if you have to do maintenance there if you want true redundancy here make sure that these two come from different isps so this one this internet connection comes from isp1 this connection comes from isp2 then they get them into the print or perimeter once again internet does need access to our, our web servers and our mail servers, but you don't want to put them on our network. And then over here between perimeter and inside, we have two routers here, R2A and R2B. Providing our redundancy, our failover, you know, it also does probably load balancing and increases your capacity. Now that we have your baseline for your zone based policy firewall network set up, we can now go and make it more complex. We can start adding in more zone. We have our traditional inside network perimeter and our outside network, but now we've wanted to separate, separate stuff out even further. So we've created additional ones. We have an e-commerce zone and an administrator zone, VPN users, VPN offices, all of these zones we, we can create and set up different rules of access between the different zones. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on an overview of zone-based policy firewalls. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel all my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.